Hello and welcome everyone. In my previous two sessions, I have shown ways to configure and verify switch interfaces. In this session, we'll look at interface and cable issues such as collisions, errors, and duplex and speed mismatch. And also more unusual cases in which the interface is working but not working well, as revealed by different interface status codes and statistics. Cisco switches actually use two different set of interface status codes. One set of two codes or words that use the same conventions as do router interfaces status codes. And another set with single code word. Both set of status codes can determine whether an interface is working. The switch show interface and show description interface description command lists the two code status name the line status and the protocol status. The line status generally refers to whether layer 1 is working with protocol status generally referring to whether layer 2 is working. The show interface status command lists a single word state. The single code interface status corresponds to different comprehension of the traditional two code interface status codes and can be easily correlated to those codes such as connected state for working interfaces. Let's look at the code combination and some root causes that could have caused a particular interface status. If you see the line interface status as admin down or protocol status as down or if the interface status is disabled then the likely cause is the shutdown command is configured under the interface. Or if you see the line status is down and protocol status is down or if the interface status is not connect state then the likely cause is either it could be no cable or bad cable or wrong cable pinouts or speed mismatch or the neighboring device is powered off or shut down or error disabled. Or if you still see the line status as down and protocol status as down, it's an error disabled. Or if the interface status is error disabled, then the likely cause is the port security has disabled the interface. And the last, if you see the line status is up and protocol status is up, or if the interface status is connected, then the interface is working normal. Next, let's have a look at the interface speed and duplex issues. To understand some of the speed and duplex issues, let's have a look at the output from the show interface status and show interface commands. Show interface status lists a one line summary of the interface status and tells us more about auto negotiation. Show interface gives us many details but not much about auto negotiation. The show interface status command implies how the switch determines the speed and duplex settings. The command output lists auto, -negotiation, auto negotiated settings with a prefix of A minus and the manually set values without the A minus prefix. For example, consider port FA0 slash 12 and 13 in the output of the show interface status command. For FA0 slash 13, A minus full means full duplex as auto negotiated. Whereas half on FA0 slash 12 means half duplex but as manually configured. The example shares the command output that implies that the switch FA0 slash 12 interface speed and duplex were not found through auto negotiation. But FA0 slash 13 did use auto negotiation. In comparison, note that the show interface FA0 slash 13 command without the status option simply lists the speed and duplex for interface FA0 slash 13 with nothing implying that the values were learned through auto negotiation. Next, let's look at the conditions that create a duplex mismatch between switch interfaces. For example, imagine that the switch to GI02 interface was configured with speed 100 and duplex full command. On Cisco switches, configuring both speed and duplex command disables IEEE auto negotiation on that port. If switch 1 GI0 slash interface tried to use auto negotiation, switch 1 would, not, would also use a speed of 100 Mbps but default to use half duplex. Confirming duplex mismatch on switch 1. Show interface GIG0 slash 1 status shows the result of the specific case on switch 1. 
First note that even though switch one had to use an auto negotiation default, the show interface command still shows the speed and duplex with a minus prefix. Switch two port was manually set to 100 slash full. So switch one sends the speed and runs at 100, 100 Mbps. However, the auto negotiation rules then tell switch one to use half duplex as displayed in show output. To identify duplex mismatch problems, always check the duplex settings on each end of the link to see if the values mismatch. Next, let's look at some of the common layer one problems on working interfaces. When the interface reaches the connect or up up state, the switch considers the interface to be working. And at the same time, the switch keeps various interface counters. These interface counters can help identify problems that can occur even though the interface is in connect state, like issues related to duplex mismatch or issues related to physical transmission or the receiving device might receive a frame whose bit have changed the values. Let's look at some of the known counters and errors in brief. Starting with runs. Runs are frames that did not meet the minimum frame size requirement that is 64 bytes and can be caused due to collisions. The second one we have is giants. These are the frames that exceed the maximum frame size requirement that is 1518 bytes. And the third counter we have is input errors. A total of many counters including runs, giants, no buffer, CRC, frames, overrun and ignore counts. Then we have CRC counter. This counter increases if it receives frame that did not pass the FCS math and it can be caused by collisions. These frames do not pass the error detection logic as implemented in the FCS field in the Ethernet trailer. Then we have frame counter. This counter increases when it receives frames that have an illegal format. Then we have packet output counter. This counter counts total number of packets or frames forwarded out of the interface. And the, then we have output error counter. This counter counts total number of packet or frame that the switch port tried to transmit but for which some problem occurred. And the last one we have is collision counter. This counter counts all collision that occurs when the interface is transmitting a frame. That's it for this session. I hope this was helpful for you and please do feel free to ask any questions through email or comments. In my next session, we will have a discussion between TCP and UDP. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon.